turning back to the U.S. and the stock market, the bull market that began in 2009 is almost four years old. Brian, does it continue in 2013? Well, uh, here we go. I think if you're expecting what has happened over the past couple of years, you're, it's wishful thinking. You're not gonna, going to see these type of gains in 2013 just because the profit cycle is markedly different. The past three to four years, you're getting accelerating earnings growth. Right now, you're getting earnings that are declining, and then we're gonna have to start rounding out of a trough. Big difference. In this type of environment, not everybody wins. But you have to look at what's happening next year. Like everybody said, China will be an improvement. That'll benefit comparisons. Europe will, probably will not be as bad as it was this year. So all the reasons to be encouraged and believe that stock prices could go higher. And also keep in mind, companies use 2012 to massively restructure their businesses. That should help their earnings as well. All right, so bottom line, you do think we're going higher next year, Brian? I do. My S&P tar S&P target for next year is you know 1505. You know, nothing too crazy. I'm not looking for 20, 25 percent, but there are gains to be made. All right, Patty, what's your outlook for the market next year? Well, we do think it's going to be a bit rocky. I'm not all of that optimistic about the whole fiscal cliff. I think that there's going to be a lot of turmoil. You see that in second terms, the first year of a second term, where you've got the new incumbent in there trying to make some changes. So politically, I expect that there's going to be some overhang. We expect that you're going to see maybe 6 7% growth here in the United States, but it's going to be very stock specific, as Brian was saying. And if you really want to see growth higher than that, you're going to have to look in other areas. So once again, I go back to looking at the emerging markets. All right, Yuri, are you bullish or bearish for the next year for U.S. markets? It's definitely more bearish than my colleagues here. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see a range during the year of probably about 1275 to 1600, which is a very wide range. Um, it's a little difficult right now to call year end. Um, I'm kind of guessing that the year is going to end slightly below where we are now. So since it's not December 31st, I can't tell you if that's an up year or a down year, but I think the market um, is going to end 2013 somewhere in the 1400 to 1450 range. So depending on where we close this year, we'll give you that growth. But I don't. I think we trade higher during the year, but close somewhere in the middle of that 1300 to 1600 range that I think we'll see next year. Brian brought up the issue of earnings and how we have seen uh, somewhat of a change in the profit cycle. Uh, Patty, a survey done by uh, the CEB, formerly Corporate Executive Board, found most executives think that sales growth has largely topped out. Uh, what's your view and how does that bode for earnings next year? So sales growth in the United States has topped out, we think. We do a lot of work with mid to small size businesses, and given what they're seeing, if they are not able to grow their stuff organically, they are actually having to take market share. And a lot of what we're seeing is market share redistribution, not necessarily growth within those markets. The folks who are winning are the ones who are in technology. Some of the, the minor industrials where they're able to do some exporting. And then beyond that, you're you're really struggling to find the growth. Brian, you, you brought up earnings. You know, last we had you on the show, you were worried that earnings would continue to fall in the fourth quarter. Do you see earnings bottoming next year? Oh, that is a great memory. But yes, uh, I do think I'm looking at the fourth quarter as, as being that earnings trough. And then you're coming out of that uh, because what happens is this the maximum pessimism quarter, new orders, there's no consistency in, in the reports you go. Pricing power is scant. You just don't know what's going to happen from day to day. So the first quarter of 2013, I think you'll see maybe more certainty around orders. People get a little more confidence around inventory planning, CapEx, and for those select companies, they might actually have some form of pricing power. You know, not explosive growth, but I think the fourth quarter of 2012 is that, that turning point or inflection point. All right, let's move to sectors. The NASDAQ has been the real story of the year, up 13%. Yuri, what's your outlook for technology in 2013? It's actually um, reasonably bullish vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the market. I could see technology um, actually outperforming. Brian mentioned before restructurings and companies. I think uh, that was as prevalent as, at tech companies as anywhere. Um, I think we've seen underspending at technology. Uh, over the last five years throughout most of you know traditional corporate America. And I think you could see you know a combination of new product cycles and just you know some regression to the mean on you know percentage of revenue spent on IT as as uh, creating uh, an environment where technology is one of the better performing sectors next year. 
Patty, we can't talk about technology without talk talking about Apple, of course. It was certainly one of the hottest stocks of the year up until probably, what, a couple months ago. Uh, what's your outlook for Apple for the next 12 months? Would you be a buyer now? Well, it's down, what, 165, 170 points from the top. Mm -hmm. I'm not writing tickets yet. Um, I do think that it, eventually it will be at a point where the stock is bottom, but I'm not good at catching falling knives. They really innovated well over the past year. The problem is, is they introduced too many new products. On top of that, you've got this whole tax thing that I think is feeding into the movement that we've seen on Apple in the past couple of months. What I'm really looking for is for the stock to bottom probably right around the end of the year, maybe the first week of January, and right around then I would be interested in picking some of it up. Um, but it, I'm not going to be going hog wild on it. I think that it's an interesting stock, but you need to look at it on its own merits as opposed to the hype that's been surrounding it. It's cheap. I think it could get a little cheaper until and then I'll just see, stay on the sidelines. All right. Another hot area of technology this year was uh, social media companies, uh, for better or for worse, I guess, depending on the name. Uh, LinkedIn was a strong performer on the year. Uh, sentiment on Facebook also seems to have turned. Valuation looks a little bit better. Brian, would you be a buyer of either of those uh, companies right now? Well, if you held my feet to the fire, I would have to say Facebook. And now, I, nothing wrong. That's not an indictment against LinkedIn. I, the CEO is very passionate. We've sat down and talked to him. Uh, I think that they're monetizing the business very well. They have reinvented the resume in the entire employment social networking space. But with Facebook, I think sentiment, as you noted, is very low. A lot of people have gone underweight. I think the estimates might be too low. And, and the fact of the matter is, there's been more iPhones, more tablets shoved out the door that's giving Facebook more areas of opportunity to monetize. And I think they're finally starting to get it on what they need to do in terms of monetization. All right, switching gears a little bit. Yuri, what's your outlook for the energy sector? We've seen oil prices really come down from their highs earlier this year. Uh, we also have this hydraulic fracturing technology, which is really unlocking uh, natural gas and, and now oil. Uh, what's your sense? Yeah, so um, I, I think what you're going to see is it's, it's difficult to be wildly bullish about oil, given my view of the global economy, because obviously it, it is uh, economically sensitive. So I don't know that we're going to see much movement in the price of oil. Um, natural gas, I kind of believe, um, for both fundamental and technical reasons, is probably going to have a rally. Most importantly, I think what you're going to see in the space is a lot of mergers and acquisitions activity. So, um, uh, spear, you know, spearheaded mostly by the Chinese, who are very, very active in the Gulf of Mexico and in Canada, for instance, buying both oil and gas properties. And so, um, you know, I believe that well-financed buyers are going to come in and snap up smaller companies buying reserves, reserves that they need, reserves that they might be able to operate uh, more profitably than the current operators do. And, and so um, stock picking is going to be very important in there. But I actually sort of feel like, you know, natural gas is finally going to have it's at least relative day in the sun vis-a-vis uh, -vis oil and vis-a-vis -vis the other industrial commodities. And that's encouraging. Uh, Patty, the housing market looks to have finally turned the corner this year, finally. Oh, what's your outlook for housing next year? And how does that tie into your take on home builders as well as ancillary plays on housing? Well, housing has bottomed. It is getting better. Everyone is all excited. I think the home builder stocks are up something like 68% this year. That's a phenomenal rally, but if you look at it, we are still below normal levels. What you're seeing is improvement, but we're not back to normal levels. I think you can continue to play on ancillary plays. I'm not interested in the home builders themselves. Um, I just think that there's a little bit too much danger in that spot. What I've really been focusing on is things like apartment REITs, because, because we're not building enough homes, because the inventories aren't coming off the banks as fast as they were, and not everyone is going to be a home buyer going forward, I think you look at the apartment plays. And one of the ones that we're using is a company called Investors Real Estate Trust, symbol IRE. They are based primarily up in the Minnesota, North Dakota area, where the Bakken Shale is once again tying into energy. They're building these uh, apartment complexes and being able to rent them out before they even get them open, fully filled with the uh, employees from the Bakken. I think that's a play that you can look at, and you know, it's yielding 6%. 
nothing bad there. Thank you for that uh, pick, Patty. Uh, Yuri, financials had a strong year outpacing the S&P. What's your outlook for the financial sector next year, especially as we're seeing sales sort of sag this year and uh, financial companies such as Citigroup that have had to go and cut layoff, laying off, what, 11,000 workers to try to shore up their bottom line? Yeah, I'm pretty negative on financials, which is somewhat of a secular uh, bet for me. Um, you know, we, we don't really do any investing in financials. Uh, but my sense is, is that the financials still essentially aren't in business. And you know, they're basically um, only willing to lend money to companies that don't actually need it. And it's hard to really grow very much when you're not willing to take any risk. Now, given their um, you know, 2008 experience and the lack of uh, uh, credit research that they did leading up to that, I can understand their, their risk aversion. And obviously, the regulators have made it a little more costly uh, for them to take on risk. But until they get back in business, as it were, um, I don't really see that as a growth area. And given the strength of the stocks this year, I don't really think, you know, I think they're more value traps than value plays. So continue to be pretty negative um, on most of the financial sector. Brian, you spent a lot of your career following retail stocks. In fact, that's how you and I met, right? I had to follow you yeah. around on a mall crawl for Kiplinger Magazine. Old school. <laughs> that's right. So what's your outlook for retailers next year? Are there opportunities even if the economy remains weak? Well, I think Patty was dead on earlier. First of all, Starbucks is the way to play right now. Pricing power, mobile makes sense. And also, she's right on the money with Tiffany's. You ain't going near it. You don't want it. They have fundamental problems in their business. No pricing power, negative. What I am looking for in 2013 is a big, giant company that nobody, that the market has seemed to forget about and that has some interesting or better comparisons compared to 2012. That's Nike. I think their balance sheet is very strong, generating a lot of cash. China will go from a major risk uh, this year to an improvement next year for them. Europe uh, is hit or miss, but I think a little bit better. But most importantly, their products are starting to finally go off or finally starting to have pricing power, and their costs are actually going down. So things are changing in Nike. The market doesn't necessarily care. I care. That's my pick. All right, Patty, what about your outlook for multinationals? You know, we hear invest in multinationals because they've got global revenue streams, uh, but in certain cases, as we've discussed earlier in this roundtable, it seems to have been hurting uh, some of those companies. What would you do for 2013? You know, multinationals, I think you have to do it on a stock-by-stock -stock basis once again. Um, we had been very heavily in multinationals. We actually backed off of that exposure about six months ago. We're starting to look at a few select place. But what you really want to be focusing on is exactly where they're getting their revenues from. So you want to look for someone who is getting their revenues more out of the emerging markets, more out of some place like Vietnam or Poland, and less out of Europe. Um, a lot of the uh, international plays are really heavily concentrated not only in Europe, but in Russia, in India, in China. While China's coming back, I've got, I've got some issues with Brazil some of those other bricks. Um, so, for example, you might want to look at something like a Philip Morris, 100% international, really playing into the emerging markets. Um, I'd also look at something like a TAL International, which is symbol TAL. They are actually in the shipping business. If China does pick up, as we've been talking about, the chip shipping lines between not only China and the U.S., but also China and the rest of Southeast Asia will pick up and they will do well also. Brian, you mentioned you like Starbucks for next year and Nike. Any other favorite companies uh, that you would recommend to investors for next year? Uh, I've got two, a little outside of my, my zone. I'm going to go with FedEx and Boeing. FedEx, I think they've massively restructured their business this year, and the market is not necessarily accounted for in their valuation. market has not cared. Uh, they are pushed through price increases. I think next year will be a better story for them. Uh, and also, in regards to Boeing, I'm looking for companies that are getting new orders right now and that can continue to get new orders in 2013. This company is getting massive new orders and it also fits in with my thesis. They've restructured their business pretty significantly and they're going to continue to benefit from restructuring probably until 2016. So they should win as well. All right, we know that you don't like financials for next year. Uh, you do like energy. What other sectors do you favor for next year? Where are you finding opportunity for 2013? You know, I think there are going to be some things to do in healthcare. Uh, but again, that's sort of a very much a story by story name. Um, you know, there's some biotechs that we like. Uh, again, um, you know, it's, it's really tied into uh, individual drug stories and, and, and M&A activity. Um, probably not too positive on uh, commodities, given my view of, of Europe, low growth U.S., 
China will help a little bit. Um, as Patty said, not so sure about the rest of the BRICS, uh, but, but prefer, you know, emerging market exposure in general. Um, you know, that's really where we're focused, technology, uh, energy, uh, healthcare, and then, you know, um, we like the consumer space in China, um, not particularly in the U.S. Thanks so much to all of you for joining us, wishing you a happy holiday and a healthy new year.